In our second election campaign, our party headquarters was hacked. All the data was stolen and then it was leaked to the media in order to make our election campaign as difficult and as uncomfortable as possible. Cyber attacks can create absolute chaos. Imagine if the electricity is down, if somebody shuts down a hospital, or if somebody tries to poison the water supply, and it's the worst nightmare for a government. Governments are actually the most threatened entities, but they are mostly using the same tools that the enterprise are using. Enterprise is much more focusing on about compliance, while government cares much more about security. And with this vision in mind, that we need to build a solution that is focusing on nation, critical assets, and government, that's the reason that we found it real. Geopolitical tensions are worsening, and now the digital consequences are as severe as the physical ones sometimes worse. There are 197 nations worldwide. None of them is protected properly for future cyber attacks on their critical infrastructure. There are many cybersecurity companies that cater to large enterprises, middle markets, small businesses, etc. When it comes to governments, there isn't any apparent leader in this category defending and protecting critical infrastructure of governments. The market is massive. The willingness to pay is incredibly high because the, the risks are, are incredibly high as well. We looked into the cybersecurity market and we realized uh, that you have more than 3,500 cybersecurity companies in the world. They're all great. They're all backed by the top tier venture capitals that exist. But most of them focusing on enterprise and small medium businesses. So we wanted to address that. We actually wanted to build a product that for the first time put governments and nations in the first priority of the product. And with that vision and with that goal, we found a dream. We wanted to build something unique and we wanted to contribute to make nations and critical infrastructure more secure. And I think what's unique about dream security, the core of the architecture, from inception to this very day, to 10 years from now, is second to none. From architecture to coordination to the application there, AI through and through, from the data servers all the way to the end consumers. We are probably the only cybersecurity solution as it stands today that is poised to help governments protect their critical infrastructure, be it in an air gap environment or on the cloud, depending on their need. And I don't see anybody catching up with us in the next few years, that's for sure. When talking about Dream's platform and how it all began, I think it's best to divide it into the technological side and the business side. So on the business perspective, the go-to-market is focusing on governmental organizations and specifically on cert organizations that supervise hundreds or sometimes even more than that of different networks in the country. And they want to achieve cyber resilience. And when we started Dream, we wanted to help them shift from reactive firefighting into actual proactive cyber resilience building. One of the key things that are most important for us in DREAM, and I think in general this is one of the most fundamental challenges that other security products struggle with, is the ability to be really explainable about what you see in the platform. We don't want to flood the user with information about all the different security data all in a single place. So what we do, for example, in the discovery map, this map is actually built in a way that the user can choose where he wants to dive into, which elements he wants to click to get deeper information, more precise information about whatever is in his specific interest. So you have this ability to navigate through all of your data in a very organized and simple way. 
the challenge that governmental organizations deal with, they have huge amounts of data, they are flooded with data, they are dealing with such massive and huge IT environments. The ability to really apply AI and be super specific and accurate in the answers that you provide to the questions that search organizations want to answer about these environments is tricky. And therefore, we do understand that in Dream, we need to train smaller models, very specific ones for every single task that we are interested with. This is what the CLM comes to solve. There are many reasons to found a startup company. Some people do it for technology, some people do it for money. We wanted to found Dream for value creations, but not value creation for ourselves. We wanted to bring values to nations. We wanted to build something meaningful that is not just a technology and it's not just a creating an employment for our employees. We wanted to create something that helps to keep cyber resilience and eventually keep the national security of nations. This is our vision, this is our goal. So when you ask me uh, how do I feel, I want to say that I feel amazing and I think that I feel privileged that I have the right of helping nations and government to do it. Dream Security is going to be a generational company. I think the main reason for that is our CEO and my co-founder Shalef Julio because he is a person like if somebody tells him that something is impossible, that's the moment where he starts to get active. A lot of people told us at the beginning, we are not sure if that is possible. And I think that is what drives him. When we found the dream, everybody told us, nah, it's impossible to have an AI that will replace the cybersecurity researcher, that will replace the SOC analyst, that will replace uh, the IT guys. And we proved them time after time after time that they were wrong. And I think that, for me, is the essence of being entrepreneur. Uh, to hear people say it's impossible and then do it, it again and again and again. This isn't just about technology. It's about protecting nations. The same way every country has an army, Dream is here to defend in cyberspace.